The Peerless Assassin 120SE is a dual fan double tower cooler from Thermalray. Now, if you don't know the name Thermalray, you probably should. They've been in the PC cooling industry for over 20 years, making the first all copper CPU heatsink, as well as some of the best coolers of the early 2000s. More recently, they've gotten recognition for some of their budget friendly CPU heatsinks, as well as being one of the first to make a mounting bracket for 12th gen Intel CPUs that is designed to prevent bending. They actually make a similar bracket for AM5, so maybe I'll check that out in the future. Looking at the packaging of the Peerless Assassin 120SE, it comes in a basic box without any color printer graphics. If you were to see this on a store shelf, it probably wouldn't get much attention since it's rather unassuming looking. With that said, I would rather see them cut corners on packaging in order to deliver a quality product at a good price, since the box will soon end up in the trash anyway. Now inside the box, you find the cooler, well packed between soft foam, with some cardboard acting as additional protection. Alongside the cooler, we find the fans and accessories, including mounting hardware, a fan splitter, and thermal paste. We also have the instructions here, which don't specifically mention AM5, but the website does claim AM5 compatibility, so you're just going to follow the AM4 instructions for your AM5 install. We also get three different sets of hardware for the various sockets that this is supported on. So we have AM4 slash AM5, LGA1700, and LGA1150 or 1200. First impressions of the cooler, I'd say it feels substantial and the build quality appears very good. I've used many brands of coolers over the years and in terms of how this looks and feels, I'd say it's up there with some of the better ones, but we'll have to wait to see how it performs to give it a final verdict. In terms of features and specs, it's compatible with LGA 1150, 1200, 1700, as well as on the AMD side, AM4 and AM5. The one I ordered is black and silver, though you can get an all white version of the same cooler. It weighs in at 730 grams and is 120 by 110 by 155 millimeters. So if you have a small case to fit this in, just be aware that it is 155 millimeters tall. It features six 6 millimeter heat pipes, 50.4 millimeter aluminum fins spaced 1.8 millimeters apart, and has a nickel plated copper base. Looking at the fans, this particular model includes dual 120 millimeter fans with ARGB rated for 1550 RPM at 25.6 decibels. It moves 66 CFM and draws 0.2 amps from a 4 pin PWM connector. The ARGB uses a 4 pin 5 volt ARGB connector. It has a male and a female end so you can daisy chain them. Thermalright lists the TDP for this model at 120 to 265 watts which I'm not totally sure why there's a range and they don't just say 265 watts, but we're going to be testing this on a Ryzen 7 7700X with a default TDP of 105 watts. We start by removing the plastic brackets on either side of the CPU socket and replace it with Thermalright's own mounting solution. From there, we apply thermal paste and the cooler simply secures to the bracket with two screws. Make sure you tighten each one a little at a time to keep the cooler even on the CPU. The fans have metal clips that hold them in place and go on quite easily. Then simply connect the fan connectors to the motherboard with the included splitter and the ARGB connector to finish the install. The memory I used is low profile, but you can see Thermalright designed this cooler to be accommodating of much taller sticks of RAM, which is a nice thing. For our test system, we're running an AMD Ryzen 7 7700X 8 core CPU an ASUS B650M Tough motherboard, two sticks of G-Skill DDR5-5600 memory, all within an ASUS AP201 case. First, I wanted to find what the minimum startup speed for the fans was. Dropping down the fans in the BIOS, I was able to get them to start at 420 RPM, so that is our lower limit for these fans. At this RPM, the fans are barely audible, but subsequently, they don't move very much air. With our fans locked at 420 RPM, we can see that our temperatures are right at 95 degrees in Cinebench, with clock speeds holding around 5.1 GHz, resulting in a final score of 19,894. Setting the fans to 100% to get the full 1,550 RPM, actually 1,675 RPM reported, and repeating the benchmark, we see temperatures settle at 90 degrees Celsius, and clock speeds maintain about 5.2 GHz. Our score has jumped up to 20,068 points. Wanting to find the limit of this cooler, I manually set the CPU to 5.4 GHz all core at 1.3 volts, 
This time, the CPU hit 20,841 points in Cinebench, and the CPU stayed below 95 degrees with the fans at 100%. So let's talk about value. At the time of testing, this cooler costs just under $40 on Amazon. And if you don't care for the RGB fans, they have one with black fans for under 36. Speaking of the fans, even at full RPM, they stay pretty quiet. And the noise you do hear is more of a whoosh than a whine. So it isn't very distracting. It has no problem cooling the 7700X, even doing pretty well to squeeze some extra performance out of it. While I can't speak to how well it would perform on a higher core CPU, this cooler was able to tame this chip. It is compatible with any current mounting solution for desktop CPUs regardless of AMD or Intel, which is nice if you want to buy this for your current system but may want to switch platforms in the future and be able to reuse this cooler. Personally, I'm happy with my purchase. There was a point not too long ago where the trend seemed to be that air coolers would continue to go up and up in price, with some up to and over $100. But I'm happy to report that Thermalright is proving that you can still get by with a $40 cooler and not have any regrets. They do make cheaper coolers and more expensive coolers, but taking a look at this one somewhere in the middle of their lineup, I would argue that it would be tough to find a better cooler for the price.